Hello and welcome to the Infinite Review Podcast. Hi. Joining me is everyone's favourite, Sean Cunningham. Hello! Hello! Everyone's <laughs> other favourite, Gavin Spence. Hello! Hello! And Richie, of course. Hi there. <laughs> everyone's third favourite. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I said. You're so, a bronze uh, medal. <laughs> how's everybody getting on? Doing good. Oh. I've noticed Richie's drinking some wine. Yeah, it's very nice. I just, I, on I, a I Tuesday. I just didn't want to get like, well, you're all drinking beer and I don't want to get kind of bloated. and. I'm not drinking anything. You can't see that, I forgot. <laughs> you're just a grey rectangle to be sure. <laughs> Sean's having a few technical issues with his camera. Yeah. It's very nice. It's very nice. I was in Oh, a, actually, um, you know what? Re- Hang on. I know something I can try to fix this. I'm going to, I'll have to hop off for two seconds. Just give me a sec. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay. Carry on with me. Carry on with me. <laughs> it's going no, no do you know what it's Sorry. going good <laughs> Richie what kind of what kind of wine is it it's a Sauvignon Blanc Sauvignon Blanc Sauvignon Blanc but of course and what, and what does that mean it's a type of white it's white wine it's a type of white <laughs> wine white, white wine, wine. <laughs> but a uh, Sauvignon Blanc compared to a non Sauvignon Blanc that's happening there okay there we go. Pinot Grigio or uh, what's, what other white wines are there? I'm not really a wine person. Wait a minute. Hello and welcome to I Hate <laughs> Doctor Who, the show where we abstain from Gallifreyan. I'm Gavin and these are my two hosts. Let's say hello to them now. First up is podcaster and potential archery champion, Philip Madison. Phil, hello. Hello, Gavin. And of course we have hit YouTuber and podcasting hunk, Owen O'Donnell. Owen, hi. Hello, it could only be me. Our guest on this episode is a director, an editor, a filmer, and a photographer. He is, of course, the founder of the I Hate Doctor Who podcast. It's Richie Morgan. Richie, how are you? What's what's happening here? (laughs) What's going on? We're doing a podcast. Doctor Who. (laughs) Do you not watch it? (laughs) Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, really, is this is this actually happening? Have you is this have you set this up? You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very confused man right now. What was what was funny as well is because I have te- like because my facial recognition is terrible. When Phil came up for a second, I was like, Sh- "Shot? No, <laughs> <laughs> stay here." <laughs> Uh, well, uh, look, welcome to I Hate Doctor Who. Um, is this actually, pod- are we actually doing this? <laughs> Did yeah. you set up Sean to have... <laughs> yeah. Was this all part- <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. I hope he's watched the episode. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> now, before we get started, if this is your first episode of I Hate Doctor Who, uh, first of all, greetings, companions. Every episode we speak to a guest who perhaps doesn't share our love for everyone's favourite Doctor, taking them on a journey through time and space, handpicking a Doctor Who story designed to win them over. Now, Richie, before we do get started uh, with the episode itself, why do you hate Doctor Who? (laughs) I I fucking hate you. (laughs) I can't believe this is happening. Oh... This is this is next level. This is this was this is very good. You've done you've done a. I had no idea. That's very good. Well done. <laughs> well done. I I'm absolutely frozen in with sort of partial fear and uh, yeah, a lot of other emotions as well. <laughs> sure, we were just like, what what if he goes mental? <laughs> what if he's like, no, you've really fucking pissed me off here. <laughs> I'm also Rich. really worried about what episode you've chosen because it's like. Rich. <laughs> well, I tell you Richie, what, why, if why you do, re- if you really, really hate this by the end of it, uh, we we can just decide amongst ourselves. Well, will this this be a guest cast episode? Or will it just be an interview? This could be a whole new show for yeah. guest cast. We just game crash our people's podcast. Holy shit! Well, why okay. don't you take a pl- take a punt at mm. what the episode or the story? That we've chosen is. You can ask three questions. 
Is it? It's not time lash, is it? Oh, he's all in. He's all nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect place to drop in the uh, the little preview clip. <laughs> Space. Is that bad? Bad? No. It's disastrous. You seriously expect me to go through space and time looking for a lost girl and her trinket? Give me one good reason why I should. Perry. This is madness! What's happening? It's time you grew old. And your ability to regenerate will be of no assistance to you. Fucking <laughs> like what like <laughs> 10 beers or something that we'd had by the time we watched it as well. I, like... I haven't watched it since either. Um... Oh God. It's going to be an interesting show. I have four notes. <laughs> as, as the only person who watched Time Lash, Stone Cold Sober, I have a lot of things to say. So. I imagine because Richie and I, we watched it. Richie came over to mine. He brought the Blu-rays with him. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Both of us had had a good few beers and we had just finished watching the Air Zone Solution. <laughs> <laughs> and while I enjoyed it, it was perhaps one of the worst things I've seen. In my <laughs> Do you know, the most surpri- probably the most surprising thing that's ever happened to me is I put on the Air Zone, just to, if anybody, I mean, if anybody doesn't know what the Air, Zo- Air Zone Solution was, it is... Uh, <laughs> you shouldn't be listening to a Doctor Who podcast, should you? <laughs> it's, ba- it's basically a... Uh, uh, it's like a sort of unofficial film that went out in videotape that had all of the Doctor Who actors in it because they didn't have the license to Doctor Who. They mm. made like an original sci-fi story, but it's got like the budget of a corporate video. It's shot in like Digi Beat, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. But um, like, there's no the, Doctor Who. The Doctors aren't playing the Doctor. They're no. playing actual other be, characters. But it was like part of the 30th loophole. anniversary. A great loophole there would be. Uh, you have all the the doctors, and each of them says, "Hello, I'm Doctor Who." <laughs> <laughs> and the BBC come along and say, "Hey, what the what the fuck are you doing?" It's like, "What's the problem?" <laughs> I just but the, think possibly like... the most surprising thing that's ever happened to me is uh, we put it on, and Gavin's wife Lindsay sat down next to us and went, "This isn't the fucking air zone solution, is it?" And I was like, <laughs> "She, yeah, yeah, she's been subjected to it by another bore." <laughs> <laughs> in the last uh, 10 years uh, to, yeah. be fair, to be fair this was after probably a solid hour of watching uh, <laughs> Beatles se- About Beatles About <laughs> series 1 of Beatles About <laughs> which was great like was, Air Zone Solution I did enjoy it but <laughs> it is but after having that many beers then watching Air Zone Solution Time Lash to me was a wee holiday <laughs> and I know I it's got a really it. bad rep seems to put it in perspective yeah, and Just I think that hearing that snippet about it is enough to make me yeah. say, oh, "Time lashes." Actually, I might have five comments now. It's better <laughs> than that or thing. I honestly can't believe this is happening. <laughs> I'm just it's imagining now, true. like us having a great time, like eh, down in drinks, and like Owen watching Time Lash, Stone Cold Sober, <laughs> and is like a full sunlight coming through the window hitting the screen. <laughs> He's got the big light on for some reason. <laughs> Standing up. A small glass of water. Yeah. And, he, and, he's, and he's watching it on daily motion, so it's been flipped. And, the, and it keeps zooming in and out. Like that. All right, Richie, I'll buy Time Lash on Blu-ray. I'm sorry. God, that's, that's you want to see roasting? that shit as sharp as possible. The, my, my main memory of watching Time Lash with Gav was... Uh, so I'd never gotten around to watching Time Lash because it was notoriously like supposed to be one of the worst episodes Mm -hmm. and um so i just had left it out basically um and yeah we were sitting watching i just remember gav kept saying this is i'm enjoying this yeah (laughs) Uh, my recollection is time lash is a lot of fun (laughs) that's my recollection of it i'll i'll say i mean i'm jumping ahead a bit here but Mm. (laughs) no i did what watching it i thought I'd already known that Time Lash was uh, notorious. It had a really bad reputation. 
And up until a certain point, I'm sorry to say, I did think this is no worse. <laughs> I mean, at no point did I think this is actually brilliant. You know, it wasn't quite that level, but I was like, I've watched Doctor Who episodes before that. There's some amount of garbage, be, but there was there was a moment, and we'll get to it, where I did let out a big oh fuck off that. <laughs> fucking terrible (laughs) anyone at home who's already seen it probably know exactly (laughs) where that point is but anyway like just just quickly looking up the tardis wiki (laughs) well don't worry i've got you covered in that regard phones down (laughs) no more of that exactly um so obviously as we say it's notorious amongst fans being one of the worst examples of doctor who media and that's why we picked it. We thought Richie would like the scenes of mass death and the, the hand puppets. Um, a little bit of history for you. This was the fifth and penultimate serial of season 22, starring, of course, the sixth Doctor, Colin Baker, and our companion Perry, played by Nicola Bryant. And before we begin, what was everyone's thoughts on Colin Baker's Doctor? I can start with my first comment. Oh, sure. Comment about, one. It's about comment one of four. <laughs> Was about the cool. Let me get my notes out. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't have them in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Comment one. What's the doctor's problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, my first note is actually before that. <laughs> <laughs> my first note is about the intro. So this is my first uh, Colin Baker episode of Doctor Who. And uh, like, Right at the start, you see his face, and I thought, I don't like that at all. <laughs> but then it smiles, and it's a bit worse. Yeah. And then it comes right at you. <laughs> Horrible. It's re- It's really like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd just thought I'd write down my thoughts about Colin Baker, because this is my first, I think, Colin Baker story, maybe. And I've just written, I feel he's kind of a pudgy, ugly bully. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get much charm from him He's not like Tom Baker or even McCoy He's a little blunt Which was a strange juxtaposition to the to the wanker's coat he's wearing <laughs> There you go <laughs> yeah. I, I, The feeling the I that... get from Colin Baker is He's definitely in his childhood He was mocked Or like at some point Not not consistently bullied, but at some point someone said something and he's had a chip on his shoulder ever since. <laughs> and as soon as he got the doctor's coat, he's like, well, now I'm going to be a cunt to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually very odd that you say that because my second note and only other note about about Colin Baker here, I think it's the hair. It's the hair that the kid in Bad Santa has. <laughs> <laughs> I know that came decades later, but I can't divorce it from Colin Baker. <laughs> <laughs> so that's have the most punchable face of all the doctors. Is there one with a more punchable face? Oh, there we go. Oh my. Oh, oh my. <laughs> what are we looking at there, Richie? That's a young Colin Baker. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Giving out moustache rides. <laughs> I think the, the, the thing I like about like 70s and 80s, like uk based sci-fi is that it is full of ugly bastards and receding hairlines and <laughs> you know all that sort of stuff i do like that yeah, it's a lot of ugly I, boys I, another thing I, in this episode uh, really keeping, flimsy doors keeping things positive i did really like a, a big paper map mm. of the universe out mm-hmm. on the terrace thing. just a like that's just a fun John like, Menzies map, like, <laughs> just a, a just a fun visual of like we're lost. We've got the the paper road map out, but we're in space, and I just funny, yeah. I just thought, yeah, I like that. <laughs> that's you know, my course, that's my positive note. What they call uh, John Menzies uh, up north of Scotland. What's <laughs> <laughs> that? Richie, do you know? Is it John Mingus? <laughs> it's John Mingus. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to believe that's true. That's like a, the biggest Scottish urban myth. Do you know what I'm not? It's called John Mingus. No, it's not. <laughs> um, so far be it from me to suggest anyone 
could sum up an episode nearly <laughs> as succinctly as the TARDIS wiki. So I'm going to read from that. And then we're going to jump in with our own <laughs> sideways take on proceedings. Um, <laughs> so if you're happy with that, boys, I can just get stuck right into this episode. Gavin, it's yours. Please. It's so funny because I was like, I was ready to jump in and give you a bit of context on Colin Baker. Oh, no, please this, do. This is not my podcast, so... Well, I, I mean, that's please show us the respect we deserve as hosts of this podcast, but also, <laughs> Ricky, when, you're, when you are a guest, treat the place as your own. So what were you going to say? I was going to say, the whole thing with Colin Baker is that he was meant to be a sort of, like, this isn't... He's different. He's a bit edgy. He might not be great. Like, in mm-hmm. the first episode, he strangles Perry and just yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah. This doctor's the best, the best one because he strangles women. <laughs> they had this whole weird thing where it was like maybe he's a bit of a baddie, um, mm. but uh, also he was the the one act he was the actor in the role that got absolutely shafted the most by the BBC, I think. So, <laughs> so he's he's definitely he's still got a bit of a chip in his shoulder about that one. Good. He has bone shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that. Uh, before we get started, Richie also showed us a lot of Panopticon footage. Is that um, another Doctor Who episode? It, it's not. No, no it's this a... is a convention. Oh. What's uh, a Panopticon? It's the name of the convention. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you. it's re- in reference to where, like, the it, where some Time Lord stuff happens. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's why no, that's, that's the right <laughs> level. That's the level I'm hitting at. That's that's fine. Fine. <laughs> Richie, keeping in mind that I'd say at least a quarter of the people listening to this <laughs> do care a little bit about Doctor Who. Don't be afraid to say a Doctor Who thing. Okay, and we do need to win some of them back on side because some of them will be furious. <laughs> <laughs> do not hold back. Oh, These geez. guys don't get who. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've held my tongue long enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can, can we have a little section where we read out previous comments on the videos that we've gotten from uh, what what Gavin has previously described as joyless cunts? <laughs> you can find me on trdq.org. <laughs> and if you're a joyless cunt, why not leave us a comment if you haven't already? <laughs> I'm actually doing it right now. I'm looking up I Hate Doctor Who. <laughs> What's the last episode? Christ, how long ago was that? Does YouTube go back that far? <laughs> <laughs> have a wee look here. Have you, have you full playlist? Owen, Sean, Gav and the Time Meddler from eight months ago. Is that eight months? Eight months. Fucking hell. I think I was, we've I... put something out in the time... <laughs> In between that, which is fucking saying something. I was like, my plan was to get uh, Danny and Finley to do one with me, but like you've seen how difficult it is to get an episode of Video Namaste <laughs> together. Yeah. So it's, yeah, yeah, Finley would be good actually. Aye. So <laughs> the Doctor and Perry are arguing over the next destination in the TARDIS, and it's ensnared by the Contron Tunnel, a time corridor in space. Can you believe that? After the Doctor fails to free the ship, he and Perry strap themselves in using what I can only describe as a 70s ladder level of seatbelt. <laughs> and I know it's meant to be sort of rickety and quite twee, but come on. Have you rewatched it? No, no. I'm just, just things I've remem- I remember. Mate, I, I just wasn't even fucking bladdered like you were. <laughs> <laughs> Time um, corridors. There's more fucking corridors in time than a fucking big school. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to see where that was going. <laughs> a big school. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think, like, when they're swinging out of the console by those belts. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, those... yeah. Right, it's come back to me now. It's come back to me. <laughs> this, this one. <laughs> That's one of those things where, you know, with so much science fiction and fantasy, there's a lot of like, just, we're going to put in stuff later, okay? Mm. You're going to be surrounded by fucking dancing jelly beans, just trust us. (laughs) But that's got to be a moment where they're like, this is shit. This is definitely going to be (laughs) shit. (laughs) When they're swaying side to side with the belts. 
and it's like and you're gonna do something with the footage to make this look good oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and I they, have to they did <laughs> uh, I feel I feel the need to remind you once again that all of the effects were done live <laughs> so Oof. they will have seen it <laughs> <laughs> at the time see I'm so glad Richie's here it's good to get a guest on who really knows their shit from yeah <laughs> But that's it, exactly. You know, this is why this is what we're going to try and win over some some of these rooms. <laughs> uh, so the TARDIS nearly gets ripped apart, but they stabilize it and they, you know, it enters the corridor once again and they navigate to the source of the disturbance, the planet Carfell, a world the Doctor has visited before, which immediately made me go, ah, uh, I don't know what they're talking about. Oh, <laughs> uh, Richie, what is it? Did they go? Did the, was the Doctor there before? And Richie went, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I couldn't i couldn't find i was the same i thought like oh like there's so many there are so many references to the doctor having been here and done something before that it must be another episode but i didn't get a definitive answer it's yeah. not I, it's is not. it not i saw i thought i saw something i was at a book or something there was no, definitely no, an entry just, in the tardis wiki about oh it. i mean <laughs> i imagine there's been some expanded media like a big finish can't leave a fucking gap like that yeah open for any amount of time so They've I been don't know enough. Time I... lash for years. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a rich seam. <laughs> Big finish it. is that in our episode? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate Doctor Who. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, no, I think it's just one of those like it's fun to be like, oh, the Doctor had did loads of other stuff that he didn't see. Yeah. Mm. Right. Well, you know, this is this is the magic of Who, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. So before they get to Carfell, so, though, they see a you, ghostly so woman. You got this whole thing. You got Sean on board as well at the start, <laughs> pretending to have technical difficulties. Yeah. Well, half pretending. I it, think. What was so? It was so. Yeah. But it was so believable because it's always Sean that has a technical. It was perfect. <laughs> it, I, I think he genuinely was having a problem with his camera as well. I can't, honestly, fair. can't believe this is in. Anyway. Sorry, <laughs> this is amazing. Are, are you having a good time? That yeah, no, matter. this. Yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is kind of like the kind of thing you do on yeah. a stag do, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like I'm on a stag do. There's a big surprise, and everyone's like, "How oh, we get to do your favourite thing?" <laughs> We're all having a big plate of shrimp <laughs> on my pot. Do you know? I was um, last week. I met a guy. He was an older guy, and he used to be like. He was in a Scottish band in the eighties, and he played with like a load of famous bands and stuff. But at a certain point, he said he mentioned his podcast, and he mm. mentioned his podcast several times, and it made me think about that. Like, has anyone ever said, "I have a podcast," and someone has responded with, "Where can I find that?" <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> no, like, no. and the idea that. You've been enjoying his stories all day. Like, I love listening to this guy. Where can I find out I've got, more? I've got, I've got a podcast. No. <laughs> no, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead and gone. Sorry. Oh, I hate so- you. <laughs> Sorry, Gavin. I didn't I'm trying to actually... Um, yeah, so that they see the ghostly translucent woman floats mm. through the console room of Super the TARDIS. Super exciting stuff. Was that a ghost? What was it? Doctor doesn't quite know. But they, they go on to Carfell. There's a small population. is ruled by a rigid hierarchy. And at the apex is the Borad, a sadistic and despotic ruler. Now, it's probably best to get it out of the way. It's it's not Borat. My wife. <laughs> I was... My wife. I was half cut at the time. And, I so desperately wanted it to be Borat, but no, it's Borat with a D, a D for Delta at the end. This is wonderful but because I get to Borat relive a, a lovely evening. <laughs> Borat got his name from Time Lash. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you can't have Borat. You know the BBC will fucking come down and you. Yeah, <laughs> a ton of fucking bricks. <laughs> Colin Baker himself. Bam! <laughs> I mean, you know he's got a strong chokehold. We've seen this. Yeah, it goes a strong jawline. So you never see the Borad in person. It's uh, only you see it through security monitors, and it shows a dignified old man. 
but something in his manner does not ring true. And I feel that's a wee bit of editorialising on behalf of the TARDIS <laughs> wiki. He seems all right. Aye. <laughs> Until you find out he isn't. Hindsight's twenty twenty. TARDIS <laughs> wiki. Um, but they enforce fear rigidly through the policing. They have androids. Big blue man group looking androids. <laughs> oh, yeah. Co- comment to. Um, Go forward to comment to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phil, uh, can I uh, raise a hand here? <laughs> I have a comment on the android as well. <laughs> Should we get your android comments out of the way? I, I can do it, yeah. Do you want to go first? Please. No, oh. no, Phil, please. The android looks like the guy from Scooter, but blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hard to argue. Um... All I say is this doesn't seem worse than usual, but <laughs> then your man, the android, walks in wearing his PJs, and I went, mm, okay. <laughs> I find that, that there's a, a shittiness to the androids that make them scarier to me than a Dalek or a Cyberman. Um, it looked like he had very bad skin. And there was yeah, something about the their voice. Paint. I can't remember, yeah. but there was something about very, their voice. Oh, they have a very high voice, I think. Yeah, very like high pitched. Kind of, uh, hey, father. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a, and a laser on. So there's rebels. You do that again, you're going in the time lash. You're going in the fucking time lash. <laughs> um, so there's rebels they get put into. The Time Lash, a permanent and ultimately fatal exile down a corridor of time and space. <gasps> so below the Borad, you've got the Malin, who's a kind of proxy mayor figure. They seem to be no more than sort of figureheads in place for the actual mm-hmm. Borad, which is the real the real ruler. Um, so <laughs> one of them, uh, is it Mikros, has grown unhappy with the ruler of the board. Since the Borad came to power, the people have been disillusioned, rebellious and miserable. And their formal, former allies, the highlight of the time lash, in my opinion, the Bandrills are poised to invade. The Bandrills <laughs> threaten war after the Borad rescinds the Grain Supply Treaty, which underpinned a relationship between two civilizations. So, imagine the sort of worm puppet. Mm. Yes. Imagine the listeners <laughs> we are who, haven't, people. who haven't we are seen the episode <laughs> listen to you reel this off. Being like, well, the thing. Having to rewind it, like, hold on, wait a minute, what? I mean, honestly, like, even as the uh, <laughs> the token, I've watched this <laughs> with my eyes and mind open, like, so much of that is like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, is even reading it now, I'm like, me. are you sure this happened? Yeah. Especially all the parts that describe it as, this scene's really good, or in a clever twist of fate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unbelievably. Uh, so like, I watched it three times in totality, <laughs> and I still don't know what happens in the last episode. No. There's only, no. There's only two episodes. I know. <laughs> the last, the last episode. So much happens, and yet so little happens yeah. at the same time. It's... It's almost like a trick of space and time in itself. <laughs> what, what was what was the worm people's thing? The band they, they wanted the grain. They had a, a, a peace treaty We've which relied here. on a grain transfer, yeah. which oh, yeah. the We've mail-in was now restricting. Right. I'm fucking raging. I thought, I thought that you were going to give us all the grain. And they'd be like, no, nah, man. And we are like, the peaceful people. You force our hand, Malin. And they, they are so... I honestly could not get enough of how they looked. They were like a sort of a <laughs> snake... People made of they... it's great. Like we need an <laughs> alien race, but we definitely only have one. Yeah, mm. and are they going to so do anything? No, put one on no. a screen. <laughs> Quite gonna... reminiscent of that little worm that used to hang out with Oscar the Grouch. Mm. Yeah, like, something oh, like yeah. uh, what's his name again? Uh, William. I, oh, what I love William. about those aliens is how quickly they go from. It's like so. Is our is our grain? delivery ready to go and they're like mm, no actually I don't think we're going to give you the grain you're forcing our hand we're going to have to send a load of nukes that blows up the <laughs> entire planet yep. and, and, but they're also like this is regrettable yep. that's such a shame we like, wish you had diplomacy has failed <laughs> you see what you've made that's us so do nice. <laughs> I mean there'll be no fucking grain next year <laughs> <laughs> you can be sure of that if you Let's just blow them up. <laughs> <laughs> they won't not give us the grain next time if they're all fucking dead. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to poke holes in Time Lashes. Uh, no, please. Plot. Show a little bit of respect because it's a classic. It became 199th 
in Doctor Who fans poll of the top 200 episodes. No. So, what was number 200? I think it was, was it something twins, the twin dilemma. Oh, the twin dilemma. Yeah, okay, fair enough. That was another Six Doctor one, holy shit. Not fucking bad, though, eh? Imagine pulling that out, Mars. Very good. Yeah? <laughs> Rubbing off on me. Um, so, Mikros uh, wants to discover the truth, and he follows the Malin into the Borad's power chamber. And the Malin's like, oh, no, the Borad wants me to transfer all of the power to them, to their personal system. And he's like, and my wife's recovering from surgery in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I'm doing it, though, because, you know, I love the Borad. and Orders is orders. And orders is orders. And he's like, but you know what? You know, you should fight back against the Borad. But the Borad finds out and then puts the Malin to death by shooting him with a gun that ages him into a skeleton. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, it's all coming back to me. It's all coming back to me. That yeah. was quite fun. It was. I like that. Like anything that where someone gets shot and then an effect hits them and then it just they swap out for a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Brilliant. It's like that great bit in Home Alone 2 where he's going, ah, ah, and then it's a skeleton going, ah. <laughs> <laughs> just if this comes out for Christmas, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Am I editing this? Yeah, I got that. Yeah. So- <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, look, who, whoever wants it at the end, that's Wait. that's the yeah. fee you have to edit it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, Renus's daughter Vina, God's sake, intervenes to plead for his life, and when this fails, she steals an amulet containing, <laughs> conferring the power to pervert the energy supply from the new Malin. The <laughs> The sycophantic Tekker. I'm just laughing at the name of Tekker because Tekker's so good in this. Tekker is, that's comment three. Tekker is very good. So right, is Tekker, <laughs> is Tekker Paul Darrow? He's the, the smarmy baddie. The placement Malin. He is, is Paul Darrow then. Yeah. So he was in, uh, so when we were watching this, I had no idea he was in this. But that actor is one of the main characters in Blake 7. So when yeah. I saw him, I flipped because... I fucking love him. And of course he was amazing, so thing is like he was good in it. The band drills are really good. The mm-hmm. skeleton mich- the skeleton firing thing is good. <laughs> the overall Borad when you see him, that's quite good. Eh. Mm-hmm. It's Time Lash might be alright. <laughs> <laughs> my main my main memory of Time Lash was was something happens to Perry and nobody seems to care. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get the, to the that. But Perry just, is okay, okay. Ca- captured, and they basically are like, "Oh, that's she's going to get eaten by a monster, uh, a Morlock." But it's going to take a while. <laughs> I, we don't know why. You said Morlock, and another detail just came. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the it's... TARDIS arrives, and Tekker's like, "I'm, I'm that. I want that amulet back." And he greets the Doctor and Perry as favoured guests, but the Doctor's suspicious of the Society as they've made huge scientific leaps in a short time, and they don't allow mirrors. And everything's matte. It's painted matte. Yeah. Mm. And I thought, my, I have a note here, only in 1985 would people <laughs> complain yeah. about all matte finish. <laughs> like, oh, why, isn't, why isn't every single thing reflective? Yeah. Why, isn't, why isn't the wood panelling also, like, why can't I see my face in this what? wood? I've just put two and two together that that's related to the no mirrors rule. Yeah, <laughs> that I, that didn't that didn't sit with me. In fact, I I didn't notice the whole mirror thing the first time round. And right at the no, I, I won't jump ahead. Also, but like Keep another thing dry. about that room that's all Matt, like what doesn't add up, and I don't see how this ties into the no reflections rule. Why does the sofa have to be so horrible? Mm. <laughs> now you yeah. won't remember this because you were blotto, but. <laughs> for <laughs> any big fans of Time Lash, those are the most those are the most horrible sofas you ever seen in your life. <laughs> Gonna have to watch. Not reflective though. So well, so yeah. right, okay. This is this is a good excuse for me to watch it again with the updated visual effects mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on the Blu-ray. God, yeah, head on over. So, <laughs> 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 so Teka tries to capture uh, kidnap Perry. Uh, but she escapes into the caves where she's cornered by Morlocks, which are these big, weird lizard things. Uh, and while she's cornered by the Morlocks, 
she meets some rebels and they arrive and shoot the Morlocks and take her into their company. However, they're soon attacked and captured by a patrol of guards. Now, that seems like a good place to stop and talk about something. But right. for the life of me, I can't think of a single interesting thing to say about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> all that stuff was like... I mean, I've seen this a couple of times, but it was particularly egregious in this, of the Doctor's assistant is off captured or having a terrible time and the mm. doctor is too busy dealing with other things but it's like no one even there's not even a bit of oh where's perry <laughs> almost yeah. fine perry she is like for the almost all of time lash she is off having an absolutely terrible time <laughs> being captured or being fed to monsters or being threatened and yeah it's like y- I kind of thought, okay, maybe I saw them at the start not getting along and like she kind of gets on his nerves and he gets on her nerves. I thought, oh, maybe it'll be all right, though, because ultimately they do look out for one another and they do take good care of each other and they care, (laughs) but not at all. (laughs) It's just like consistently all the way through. They just seem to absolutely... (laughs) <laughs> no. just nonplussed I always yeah. even hatred just not it's interested always really funny about Perry is that she's definitely the compa- companion that had the worst time <laughs> 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 like to, every episode of hers is just fucking misery <laughs> like you know you think about like modern Doctor Who and, and like how it's just this great wonderful experience for everybody that travels with them and you know it's just and it's life changing and, and it's so emotional when they have to leave and like Perry even, like Perry must have just been like fuck this yeah, thanks, thanks for <laughs> Just drop me off anywhere here. <laughs> the second she heard about the time lash, right. she ran for it. <laughs> so why she just ends this, up. Uh, her character just, just really ends up. up here. Her ca- I think her character ends up marrying Brian Blessed. Oh, oh well, there you go. <laughs> well, well, actually, no. They, they they have an episode where they 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 have her like. She has her. She loses her body to this sort of slug man, and they put her. They, she loses her brain, and the new brain's put in, and she mm. dies basically. But then it's like it's found out later on because the whole season's a mess that actually she went off and married Brian Blessed. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Well, as good as anyone can hope. She didn't have her brain ripped <laughs> out and replaced with a slug or whatever. Or... Now, I want you to imagine someone who hasn't seen any of those episodes here and you rattle all that off. <laughs> so lost. Here, right. There's there's a moment, I think we've passed it now, we have passed it, where the, mm-hmm. the Doctor and Perry are off in their room, away from everybody else, and a uh, kind of undercover rebel bursts into the room mm-hmm. to hand them a note in yes. relation to the spies in the cave. Do you remember his line? No. <laughs> no? He just runs in and says, Hello! Hands him a note. <laughs> that's it, that's his entire... <laughs> Not like this is really like take this and we need your help. Take this. Yeah. No. Hello. Hello. <laughs> no. Run. Well, a lot of the actors back What's then. What's going on know, now? The, 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 a lot of actors were paid by the word. <laughs> <laughs> what he managed to convey in that hello. Oh, this spoke a thousand words. <laughs> hello. Um. So the doctor wants to protect Perry, and he returns the TARDIS into the time lash. He calculates the normal path of the time lash would send people to 1179 on Earth. Christ, we're only this far into the episode. <laughs> but, no, no, we're nearly done. But the interference of the TARDIS, which, you know, passed through the Doctor and Perry, you know, we'd seen Vina going through there earlier, had caused her to end up in Scotland in 1885. Oi! Oi! I, I, I have to jump in here. Isn't it very funny that the setup of the time lash itself they really <laughs> drilled the idea of like the time lash is the most terrifying Hell. and most yeah. horrible possible death like being put in the time lash is the worst thing yep. imaginable it's like event horizon mm. and uh <laughs> what it turns out is it's a big pipe that goes to scotland <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you ever been to Inverness? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. That's why when people are being extremely slowly pushed into the time lash, they go, ah, ah, ah. 
no, <laughs> no. Every, everyone's acting was dreadful. <laughs> it's like they're, they're, they're close to the time last night. You can hear the complaining already. <laughs> no. They're talking about tap water. <laughs> Nice to see the Time Lash had a very accessible ramp, though. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you arrive in Inverness all the way back then, and before the end of the day, you've already heard, that's the way, though, isn't it? <laughs> you've heard that so many times, and you're like, just kill me! Just kill me! Just kill me! <laughs> time <laughs> Lash, no! <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, well, that's the way. Yeah, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> grabbing and ripping out your own throat, like. <laughs> <laughs> Biting out your own veins. <laughs> so the doctor heads back to Scotland to find Vina, and she finds uh, he finds her along with an agitated young man named Herbert. And all three depart on their return journey to return the amulet, which is all Tekker cares about when the TARDIS arrives back in the council chamber. The Doctor, Vina and Herbert are round up by the rebels and condemned to the time lash. And it's like, yep. well, that's just literally where we came from, but okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the cliffhanger, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so like the time lash is ready for use. Tekker tells the Doctor to save his breath for the time lash. Because most depart with a scream. Save your breath for the time lash, Doctor. Most people depart with a scream. <laughs> Not true. We've seen it already a few no. times. No. Uh, uh, I do like when they arrive and uh, Herbert is there. And, like, as far as Herbert's concerned, he has just summoned, uh, mm. like, a ghost from space. Yeah. And all he does is talk about himself. <laughs> you'd, you'd really think that you would have questions for like, you know, tell me about uh, the space, you know, the side, you know, like, and he also thinks that they're a demon. So it's like, what, like, like what's on that? But he's just like, well, I'm Herbert. I, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, writer, teacher. it's just a couple of people right here. I'm uh, I've got a couple of hobbies and it's like can you imagine summoning a demon or a ghost and just telling them like what you're your dollars dishwasher <laughs> for <laughs> I've been like how... just telling them I've got a podcast <laughs> yeah all oh, right Actually, it's about um it's about men's health uh, like mental health as well mental health as well mm. I've got a podcast about how men don't always get a fair shake yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the android then one of the androids grabs the doctor and he grabs him right by the scruff of the neck and pinches so so sore um, which I didn't like but then Tekker tells the doctor goodbye as android forces the doctor closer to the time lash ending the first episode <laughs> And possibly the Doctor. <laughs> and possibly the Doctor, yeah. What a fate for the Doctor, travelling in time. <laughs> <laughs> to Scotland in 1885. Um, I know I have a note about the Doctor's neck being grabbed here now. I've not read this since I wrote it. So. The bad acting combo of the Doctor's reaction to being grabbed by the back of the neck. Grack! And Malin Tecker actually blowing the take with a glance to the camera crew. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Like, so rather than use a better take, someone was like, this is as good as it gets. Yeah. But yeah, that that whole shot is amazing because there's like, a lot Tom of people Baker being held is help. really bad and <laughs> Tegger actually does a little side glance Wait, to okay. it. And so I, like, and can I you think believe this? Yeah, I, I think he it. thought, well, this we'll have to start again because of how poorly that went. But no, <laughs> no, it's 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 Friday night. Uh, they're near the end of the episode. A lot of people being held back from the pub. That'll do. <laughs> it says back then, it's for fucking kids. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> who gives us shit? It's for kids. <laughs> uh, I was annoyed by the doctor uh, describes Perry. I don't know if it's Perry or uh, Vina, but he says, 
She's irritatingly resolute. He compares mm. Perry, female. which I think is yeah. very telling. <laughs> yeah, irritatingly resolute. Mm, but a bit of a mind of her own, this one. <laughs> and um, when they're when they're traveling back from Scotland, uh, the excuse to Herbert is like, "There's there's no time. There's no time to bring you." Yeah. Which really doesn't wash <laughs> <laughs> when it's a time machine. Uh, like, uh, obviously anyone with half a, and excuse my language here, bloody brain, would <laughs> know what they were leaning, leading towards with Herbert. And like, you know, but like, how quickly did you cotton on to who Herbert was or was going to be? Or did you at the very end go, Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I was... know the H stood for Herbert, though. That's the only thing. I've got no idea if he even does. But as soon as, <laughs> as, soon as they got him, and they're like, "Oh, I'm a writer, by the way," you're like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> time <laughs> machine, eh?" <laughs> Morlocks, you say? <laughs> a little treat for uh, fans of the Time Meddler. Right here, just says. I show little mercy to time meddlers. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Oh. Just yeah. another one of those things that y- you don't really get to say that. As soon as he said that, though. you do. <laughs> All the time. Richie will tell you, as soon as he said that, I stood up and started hammering my foot on the ground and started going, oh, oh. I was so fucking into it. I, I do have a question about episode one mm-hmm. in my notes. Uh, my cross was played by Eric Deacon. Any relation? <laughs> to John. John Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> so have we seen the picture of uh, Joe Grant yet? No. Oh, okay. you're jumping ahead. You're jumping ahead. Actually, see now I've meant now that I see Richie. Are you okay? Yeah. You look really. You look exhausted after that. <laughs> I know what he needs. Do you know what I think you could do oh, with? Oh no. Okay. A little bit of fun. A little okay. bit of fun. Okay. Still a wee bit of fun. Um. Now, Owen, are you doing your fun first, or should I go? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do mine. Mine's quick. Mine's quick, and then we can get right back into episode two. <laughs> okay, I've got a bit of fun too. After this. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So I've got a game, uh, which I'll wait until Richie stopped texting. Sorry, I'm asking Leah to bring me some wine. <laughs> <laughs> what a life. <laughs> Honestly. Just the little bell. Yeah. <laughs> That's how he goes. <laughs> More like, wine. When you get a notification from me, can you change it so it's a little bell? <laughs> <laughs> She's not reading it. <laughs> I've got a game called Dr. Ha. Yep. So, <laughs> so I'm not one for incredible feats of originality. I'm going to give you all the setup to some Doctor Who related jokes. Oh, <laughs> First one to say their name gets to answer, and if you give me the punchline, you win a point. And I'll what start if you we're off. too embarrassed to say the punchline? <laughs> They're all really funny, so don't worry about it. Okay. I'll start you off with an easy one. Say your name if you think you know the answer. What do you call a time travelling cow? Owen. Oh, shit. Owen? Dr. Moo? It is Dr. Moo, you're right. (laughs) Congratulations. I'm I'm not embarrassed, I'll take the point. Number two, what does the doctor order with his pizza? That's what does the doctor (laughs) order with his pizza? Think of things you might order when you order a pizza. Yeah, I'm tr- I'm tr- I don't eat pizza. With, to have as a side or like on no, the pizza? No, 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 no. Like in, in. On the pizza? <laughs> no, think uh, order oh, with oh, his pizza. Yep. With his... Uh, K9 garlic bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's incorrect, but I'd hate to give someone a, a, an unfair point, but you had the right food. Oh. oh. Phil. Phil. Dalek bread? Dalek bread oh, is correct. God. Well done. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you're, I was close. I was close. You were close. You gave me half a can of San Pellegrino. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone gets this, I swear I will fucking wire you a hundred pounds. Um, what's the technical oh technical term for the doctor meeting another incarnation of themselves? Fuck it. 
what's the technical term for the doctor is this still a joke or just a is, question is this a it's question a or a joke it's a joke what's the technical term for the doctor beating another incarnation of themselves sorry someone got an answer the one sorry again. richie uh -huh. <laughs> who's who it's not who's who i'm afraid anyone else want to give it a try what is the technical term for the Doctor meeting another incarnation of themselves. So we're not talking about the Blinovich limitation effect, no? We're not talking about that, no. Not the Blair Witch <laughs> effect, no. <laughs> Phil. Uh-huh. A paradoctor who? <laughs> Phil, you were very close. That was, oh! good. that was good. That was good. Just 50 pounds, then. <laughs> the technical term for the Doctor meeting another incarnation of themselves, a paradox. Oh, brilliant. oh, that's, that's brilliant. good. That's really good. That, that's good work. Yeah, they did not bad there on uh, Fuck. whatever I'm website so I ripped these from. <laughs> Number four, why did Daleks eat so much fruit? Why did Daleks eat so much fruit? Um... Think about different types of fruit. Different types of fruit. Different types of fruit. Types of fruit. <laughs> Think of, you're in the greengrocers. Just have a look, in the, look in through the... All the uh -huh. little barrels, all, all the different kinds of fruits. Are you talking about a different type of fruit or the reason why they eat so much fruit? Why do Daleks eat uh -huh. so much fruit? Um, Owen. Owen? Because they assimilate uh, uh, fruit, passion fruit. Pa pom <laughs> pomegranate? I'm afraid not. It's simpler. Pomegranate. <laughs> it's simpler than you might think. Because uh, they exterminate too much, they exterminate too much uh, sweeties, <laughs> sweeties, <laughs> sugar. I don't know. No, I'm afraid sweeties. Daleks. Daleks eat so much fruit because, of course, an apple a day ah, keeps the doctor away. Ah, yes. Fuck! Stupid bunch of bastards. Fuck! <laughs> the last one. <laughs> Actually, this is the worst one as well. I don't know why I made this the last one. <laughs> what would you call a murder mystery in the TARDIS? That's what would you call a, a murder mystery? Hudo. It's not Hudo. Richie. <laughs> no, that is good. That is good. Who done Richie. A who done it? It is a who done it. That's well right. Done. And with that, we have a clear. Uh, Tie <laughs> between three Phil tie? and Owen and Richie. <laughs> so, thank you for playing Dr. Ha. Everyone's a Gavin, winner, baby. Thank you very much. That's the no lie. <laughs> That's no lie. Poor Gavin, you're getting no break there at all. I know, I know, but that's just the that's what happens when you have your own podcast, you don't. <laughs> so, uh, so for the listeners now know everything that happened in episode one of Time Lash and have a good idea of what's happening there. Do you want to tell us uh, part two? Part two? <laughs> Any chance of quickly telling us what happens in part two, Time Lash? So now, the doctor fights back. <laughs> Sorry, Richie. There's a whole bit at the start of Time Lash part two and I could not fucking tell you for what was happening. Yeah. Yep. Well, first note, and this pisses me off. This is this has been a, a problem for me ever since I was in my childhood when I was watching the Flash Gordon cartoon. Mm -hmm. Every single episode of the Flash Gordon cartoon had a pre-intro sequence bit where Flash Gordon finds himself falling into some sort of dangerous situation. And there was always basically footage of Flash Gordon being fucking killed. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, yeah. beyond a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> intro music plays... It's a ripping theme, by the way. And when they, we come back to see what happened, it's just different. <laughs> it's just not what happened beforehand. It's yeah. but and they fucking flash Gordon it at, <laughs> in Time Lash Part Two because, like, <laughs> the daughter was dead. We saw it happen. He took two bullets in the guts before they kicked him into the Time Lash. Yeah. And then <laughs> Episode Two starts, and he's like, Hua! and fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> there's there's one of those really annoying bits of and it's just like you know there's limitations like with the budget and how what they can do with the set and everything but there's like five guards holding guns and because someone says now uh like 
everyone who doesn't have a gun just takes the guns off the people yeah. who have them. <laughs> a, lo- a load of people... It's the element of surprise. ...just run out of the scene because it will be difficult if they're still in it. Yeah, when there's, this there's is all like, done, and it's like they've they've taken over now. They've taken Got over off. the fourteen people who live on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was um, that 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 recap was long as well. Like that was definitely felt like a bit of padding going on. Mm. Um, but the Doctor fights back from going into the time lash, doesn't he? Because you'd never, no one does that to the oncoming storm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Councillor Brunner is killed and they seal the chamber doors uh, and they kind of get it all ready for a siege, essentially. Uh, they're all getting their weapons ready and they're waiting to be ram-raided by bad bastards in blue. Um, this buys the Doctor enough time to hoist into the time lash itself on a rope, on a rope. They had him hanging on a rope <laughs> to take two Contron crystals from the wall of the time corridor and he uses those it's to create like... a time ruse. Mm. Allowing like him to slip out the chamber. A fucking challenge in gladiators. It, it was so <laughs> confusing, like, wasn't it? The, Just the whole the whole time he was in that, I was thinking, this this is the scene where you've been you're in your sitting room in 1985, and now everyone's come in. <laughs> the and, the and everyone's come in, and there's and they're saying, "Oh no, leave it on, leave it on, your grand." And yeah. someone asks, "What's what's happening?" And you're <laughs> furious because they're ruining your Doctor Who time. But you also know that you have no answer to that, even as someone who likes it. Yeah. You have no answer that won't make it sound shite because it is, <laughs> and you don't know what's happening. You don't know why he's in there or what he's doing. It's such a. But hilarious. everyone in the room is saying, "No, no, go on. We'll we'll watch it. Tell us <laughs> what's happening." <laughs> well, he's getting crystals from inside the time lash to. I don't Why? Know. Why? <laughs> Everyone's taken off their socks and putting th- putting loose change in their socks. <laughs> or even worse, they're what? just they're just sitting silently, so they're not even saying anything. You just imagine. There we go. Oh, wine delivery. Wine delivery. Leave the bottle. <laughs> like they're just sitting this is my experience it's like they just sit silently you wait waiting for death and all you're all you're thinking about is like what are they thinking I've, what are I'll they be, thinking I, about i skipped ahead a little bit right because it says here it allowed the doctor cr- to create a time ruse mm. which <laughs> as we know ruse. you know that wee thing the doctor builds that allows them to sort of like make a copy like a, a hologram sort of copy or no well, not a hologram it's copy like, like a time it's like a there's a 10 second delay on what yeah. other people are seeing of him and i gotta say that stuff i thought that was really good it was interesting yeah because that's like that's opened up the opportunity for him to do like it's like oh fuck like because there's a good moment of we don't know that he has turned that on because like yep. first he just there's a few uh demonstrations of like here's me doing the thing and like how he gives the demonstration is like kicking people up the arse and pushing them. <laughs> yeah. Like it's really dickish, but it's kind of funny. But like they're just like it is a fun thing to have someone like shoots him and he's just standing there. Yeah. And then you realise he's <gasps> done the time ruse. And it it's like it. that's that's good. The that thing is good. like what I think about this is, right? In the TARDIS wiki, it simply says a time ruse, doesn't elaborate on that. And mm. then later on, when it comes into play again, doesn't really talk about it. Did the person who wrote this truly Not understand it? I don't think they got it either. <laughs> Do they even refer to it by its proper name of the time slip? Probably fucking not, man. I could do a control F and try and find it. I'll tell you what, don't, because it might ruin a game later on. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, feel, I feel so like weirdly like just almost out of the loop because I can't remember these details. <laughs> you should have paid, paid the, a bit more I, attention. I thought you liked I, Doctor I, Who. I'm the Doctor Who fan, and everyone's like, so when he did this, and then he did that. And I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds right, I suppose. Just hearing the can of an hour lager open. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what flavour of can is this, Richie? Oh, is it a taste of your own medicine? <laughs> 
you, you can't expect Richie to have paid full attention after what Lindsay said. You know, yeah. he was just sitting there drunk thinking, oh, I fucking wish I'd married Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> She's seen the air zone solution. <laughs> She's seen the air zone solution. And that we'd that. get on. <laughs> Next thing I want to see is me naked. <laughs> <laughs> up next <laughs> so uh, Tecker goes to the Borad and he blames the setback on his last remaining counsellor which I really liked and Tecker by the way is the best thing about the entirety of 100% uh, yeah. of this time lash thing not not, not the, the band drill it is Tecker I love that bit where he's like right so you're going to be my second in command basically uh, me and you together forever fantastic yep and then as soon as he gets into the win with the Borad he's like Kill him, by the way, it was all him. This is fault. <laughs> Excellent. It's better than the, the start of the... I think it's near the start of the second one, but this is where I truly lost my grip on reality. Um, where he's really lording it over the Doctor, and mm-hmm. he's almost like, admit you've been outsmarted by Oh, yeah, me. yeah. And it's just phenomenal. <laughs> admit defeat, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that? Yeah, he's, he's loving it. Like, properly oh, loving it. Brilliant. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was fantastic. It was very much kept my... Uh, kept my uh, attention throughout. Good. Um, good. <laughs> <laughs> so it, he's good. He's very good. Blake, he is good. So I'm just use this my opening to recommend Blake Seven. Oh, is he, is he like that in Blake Seven? Yeah, he's a total, yeah, sneaky oh, okay. bastard. Nice. Interesting. Well, watch Blake's Seven. It's it's fucking really good. Do you want to do a podcast about it, Gab? <laughs> well, you know who not to invite next time. <laughs> so, Tekka remains at the side of the Borad, now revealed as a hideous amalgam of human and Morlock. Together they watch on the screen as Perry is brought into a cave and strapped down while Morlocks gather to feed dead slow. I was like, Pe- Perry? Oh, Perry They're not that hungry. Perry, it's yourself. Where have you been? <laughs> Well, <laughs> oh, the writer couldn't be arsed with me, so he fucking sent me to a cave. Yeah, again. <laughs> again. Twice. Um, so they watch on a screen as Perry is brought into the cave and strapped down, and they release this canister of uh, this chemical that can fuse together different tissue as one creature, similar to a brundle fly, for example. Oh, yeah. Or the fly's dug. Or the fly's dug in the fly, too. <laughs> or that bit at the end with the baddie. <laughs> It seems the Borad has taken a liking to Perry and wishes to mutate her like himself. The Doctor arrives to confront Tekka and the Borad, recognising the latter as Megalin. Is it Megalin? A cray scientist he encountered on his previous visit to Carfel and exposed the Council to unethical experiments on Morlocks. So, this is, again, one of those things where it was like, oh, this is from the, the episode that we haven't seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, I felt like a fool. Because I was like, oh, I don't know this. I don't. I, this. I feel. I feel out of the loop in this regard. Um, can 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 I jump in here, Gavin? Oh, please. Um, do. There's a line while they're talking about uh, the fact that Pertwee had been. Uh, they they've met Perks. in 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 a previous life, and Colin Baker says that he has changed immeasurably for the better. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and and I'll just I'll just read my note. The fucking cheek. <laughs> <laughs> what we what we learn every time we do this show is Doctor Who fans have a high pain tolerance for shite, and <laughs> time lash isn't good. But it's hard to see what makes it notorious in the fandom, and I think it was this moment because you can make as much rubbish as you want. But don't insult <laughs> Doctor Who. That's the crime of this episode. <laughs> so what do we think of that theory that like Time Lash is fine, but it's just Who fans are furious that they said Pertwee was lesser than Yeah, no one says that Colin about Baker. Perks and gets away with it. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I man. genuinely like, think it might just be the, the coming down the wall, the gladiators bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think... And again, maybe it's just after what you'd said at the start of your uh, your note there, Owen. It is true. Like maybe we should leave this till later on in the episode. But if you are a Doctor Who fan who says, "Oh, the time lash is awful. It's rotten. It's terrible," you get some fucking cheek on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's no worse 
<laughs> no. <laughs> no, we really we not. are still we are still coming up to the bit. Yeah, I mean we're going to come really up to really made me say oh fuck. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um don't worry time lash haters. You'll uh, you'll, <laughs> you'll be vindicated before the yeah, night is You'll done. be punching the air. <laughs> <laughs> um it seems that one of the experiments has gone wrong and Meglin wishes to replicate its effect to create a partner for themselves. His partner his, his, his plan was to provoke a war with the Bandrills, with these warheads that will wipe, you know, basically what he's wanting to do is get these Bandrills to attack the planet, kill everything, and then he'll be... The Morlocks the, will survive. The Morlocks, and he'll rule the he'll Morlocks. He'll be king of the Morlocks. And, no um, grain, though. No. Yeah, but zero grain. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it leaves wipes out everything, leaves the Morlocks alive, allowing him to repopulate the world in his own image. This revelation prompts Tekker to rebel, but he's swiftly aged to death. <laughs> 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 By stepping into the line of fire. Yeah. I mean, he stepped up. It's quite horrifying, the idea of being aged to death. Like, how much of aging do you experience in a short space of time do you think well you tell that, us <laughs> <laughs> that is one of those you know uh, you remember round the twist yeah the horrible australian show for children yep. uh there was an episode of that where two people were aged they were fighting over something that was a- aging them both mm. And like there were two young guys fighting over it, and they started turning into old men, <laughs> and they were still pulling on the thing, and then they like, turned to dust or whatever, and that really fucked me up forever. Yeah, and the <laughs> fact that I can still remember it, like it was just the sight of the actual elderly men <laughs> still doing it, and it's like, oh my god, oh my god, imagine, do they, do they have no pride? Like, do they, do, <laughs> like, when they died, did they smell a bit like piss? <laughs> or maybe they they jump past that because maybe. it's happening quick. Yeah, maybe. The round the twist thing I remember more than anything was there was a story where the boys in the school were having a contest to see who could piss highest over a wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was, mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, okay. and, and this one, the one kid who had this he half got this four BBC one secret power <laughs> where he could like piss super high oh, over a wall. Yeah. <laughs> and hit. Folk on the other side of the wall. Yeah, yeah. Which is good. That's great. Was it just uh, like trying to get everyone to dislike Australia? <laughs> I, I, I think it's a clever ruse. I think it's like you don't want to come over here. It's like a, yeah. it's like a and then meanwhile they're just like, that's a counterpoint to <laughs> counterpoint to everyone having a nice time on the beach and home and away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you know, you know, it's not all great. Yeah, sometimes it's not all bonza burgers with big yeah. sal. It's, it's not, all... not all falling off a cliff the... and then making the lamp go. Let <laughs> me tell you about the pal- the palomine I had in high school, who could spit really high. Oh, I. <laughs> and we used to marvel at him during break times because he would he would one time he spat over like fireworks the, the roof wow. like, <laughs> <laughs> spat over the lip of the roof of the building. Shit. <laughs> That's horrible. Where is he now? I I mean he's still about. <laughs> I don't know what he was. Yeah, so he didn't he didn't manage to cash in on it or anything. He's the centre sure. square on celebrity square, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he spits to the guy above him. <laughs> Holes through the bottom of the grid. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, like, it just reminded me there of um, being at lunchtime at school, in high school, and we're sitting at the kind of football pitch bit, and there was this kind of raised bluff, and all these seagulls were swooping around trying to get people's lunch, and there was just a load of boys trying to throw stones at them. Mm-hmm. So they're just chucking stones at this at the seagulls, and eventually one of the boys hit a seagull, and it fell out of the air and landed with a thud on the ground, <laughs> and all the boys turned to him. And just battered them. <laughs> oh no way! <laughs> like, what Hope did you do? Is an intense place. Man. What did you do that for? Like, we were all throwing stones, but <laughs> not to hit them. Yeah, we're not, we're not trying to hit the, the seagulls. We're just trying to give them a fright. So, yeah, I just don't know. There what was I... no seagulls over Richie's school. <laughs> like, there was a no fly zone. <laughs> 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 
fuck? We, we were fucking... Oh, my God. You would have had a nightmare, Gav. We were out, out for burgers in Liverpool last week, and um, they had tables outside, and one guy was like, oh. it was full. He's like, I'm going to go outside and sit at the table. And it was like, do you know that bit in End of Evangelion when they all come down and tear apart <laughs> Unit 2? It was like that, but with seagulls. And a guy oh. trying to eat burger and a burger and chips. It was like, oh, I honestly in can't his, in his hands. Sure. Yeah, it was just they were just they were swooping for ages, and then eventually they just went for it. Oh, it was bleh, terrifying. Yeah. The guy just had to get Liverpool up and seagulls. run away. No, I couldn't. Yeah. Dangerous, horrendous. Hey, look, our listeners are desperate to hear how time. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I think I'm ready for a little bit more fun. Are you sure? Oh yeah. I'd you don't. I'd... You don't. You don't want to wrap up. Episode two. Well, it? Let me do one more line, oh. and then we'll return for the end. Because this is no, I want this to go on forever. <laughs> so, after Tecker is swiftly aged to death, the Doctor uses their time slip, the Contron Crystal, to deflect Meglin's beam back at them, killing the mutant in his wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> what? what you... Yeah. yeah. No, I, I gotta say that that bit. Like the idea of the doctor being a pacifist, it's like you can fucking spin some bullshit about like, oh, well, I didn't actually. Yeah. Kill him. <laughs> what What happened in that scene was the, the doctor. Was... The doctor caught a bullet, loaded a gun, and <laughs> shot back. <laughs> yeah. Like that. That's what happened. There's blood on like, his The hands, doctor yeah. easily could be like, you know, if if the doctor did not want to kill him. The like, that was a decision that was made there. It's like, oh well, you, you know, you you've actually killed yourself, mate. <laughs> oh man, when you shot me, you killed yourself. <laughs> Bull. I was, <laughs> was going to say the doctor. I have passed. a point. The the doctor's <laughs> a bit of a violent. This one's a bit of a nutcase. Yeah. So <laughs> the pacifism thing is. Mm, Look at his jacket. It's questionable. <laughs> Do you think a sane man would wear that jacket? <laughs> <laughs> have we got to the bit where the... No, I think the... No, that must have happened during That's the big... That's not the end. The big fight scene Sorry, where... I, why was there a picture of John Pertwee under oh, just the wallpaper? That, that's what I'm just about to talk about. Like when I think when they had the big fight earlier, a bit of the wall got blown <laughs> open, mm. and that was the... There was the picture of Pertz. It was like um, a cut. Co- it was like a cover of a fucking nineteen seventy four annual was coming through. Yeah, there. it was. That was that was promo art that they had. That was not made special. Like no, I got no, that, was, that was lost lore. I got the feeling restricted by the mail-in. I, got, I well, that's it. Yeah, exactly. The, that that old lore was papered over by the by the Boran the new I fucking love that. Like someone knocked down a wall and revealed some of the TARDIS wiki. <laughs> 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 but I thought it was quite I dare I dare I say this quite cool that they unearthed <laughs> this picture and it was Pertwee and I was like that's quite cool and I was like you need to fucking sober up man. I know I know this is like still drunk I know still drunk from that that fateful <laughs> night fateful night I mean I get I guess like we take it for granted now because all sci-fi has to have fucking callbacks coming out the arse but it would have been a bit more like ah oh, it Look was it subtle. Is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, this episode it. needs something. Because I'll tell you what it doesn't have. An actual comprehensible conclusion. Yeah. So put in a fucking picture of Pertwee. There were no issues throughout this entire... Pro- every problem in this episode spanned from the fact that these people had the time lash. Yeah. And also... Every single one of those problems would have been avoided or solved if instead of having the time lash, they just had a big hole. <laughs> yeah. No, not the big hole. Please don't drop me. Don't throw me in the big hole. The big oh, she's hole. got in the big hole and she's got the amulet. We'll just get it off her. We've got somebody to get a ladder and go down there. Oh, we, we need a time machine because she's gone in the time lash. Doesn't happen. <laughs> Doctor never comes. Everyone's, and when he arrives, he's like, ooh. They shouldn't have that yet. <laughs> <laughs> so everything that went wrong for them was caused by their own hubris. Phil, we haven't gotten to the real problem. Now, I don't know if Gavin wants to... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Tell us what is that the, the section name? The, the, no the, it made me realise that if, if society had a time lash, mm. if any society had a time lash, it wouldn't be used for 
punishment. Folk would just chuck, their, chuck their rubbish in it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> It'd be a big skip. Endless just fucking throwing like old washing machines. Are you saying this is what happened to Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> answers a lot of questions. To be fair. <laughs> Scottish people are just crap aliens. <laughs> fucking nappies. That, you know, yeah. Fucking throws. <laughs> Not melt your mouth away. Yeah, <laughs> seems seems fairly plausible to be honest. But um, the like. I don't know what the the wiki set how the wiki describes this whole bit, Gavin. But the the conclusion, mm-hmm. the doctor's plan, yeah, and sacrifice. Mm. Do you want to say that, or do you want me to just complain about it? Uh, well, I can run through it really quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell us what they say. So Herbert helps the doctor rescue Perry from the Morlocks. They return to the council chamber, where Amicross and Vina have identified a Banjo invasion fleet, armed with warheads, and it's close. So the Banjos are suspicious of the Doctor's attempts to intervene. They're like, we don't think you are actually the Doctor. (laughs) So the Doctor takes drastic action. He materialises the TARDIS in the path of an oncoming warhead, risking his own life to save Carfel. And Herbert's. And Herbert's. He succeeds and returns to Carfel to find Meglin has returned from the dead and threatening the Council Chamber. Or rather, it was one of his clones. (gasps) Ah... Megalyn is unbalanced by the image of himself in a boarded up mirror, revealing the reason he had a way, and he's thrown into the time lash by the Doctor, who said the Borad was sent to Loch Ness. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Who's, who's, yeah, who's, who's the Loch Ness monsters from... He's a Hoovian. From Carfel. We already had the Loch Ness monster in fucking Zygons, didn't we? Oh, have you found a, a loophole in this? Uh oh. A, a paradox? <laughs> uh, yeah, they have. The Cygons have a cyborg sea monster. Hold on. This is. <laughs> I, I get nervous because I'm like, if a Doctor Who fan's listening to this and I'm wrong. <laughs> like some shit. This guy doesn't know his time lash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Zygons put the Loch Ness monster there. Not so. Yeah, not, not the so. case. Not the Pick case. one. <laughs> Pick one to be canon, Richie. <laughs> Which one would you prefer? <laughs> um, so in the TARDIS, the Doctor and Perry prepare to depart Carfel and return Herbert to his own time. Herbert is still outside and the Doctor calls him to hurry up before showing Perry Herbert's calling card, which identifies the young man as Herbert George Wells. <gasps> Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> and at that point, everyone, Whoa. everyone in Britain goes, "I well, yeah, it was all right." It was all right. <laughs> oh. Do you know? Do you know? Part two of Time Lash was seen by seven point four million viewers. <laughs> yeah. Which is the first time I've ever felt sympathy towards the people of Britain. <laughs> um, it is what's amazing really... what people did when there was we didn't know the internet, yeah. isn't it? Um, they were still outside. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it was raining. They could have drove around on quieter roads. <laughs> um, but what's horrible is that, like, so much of part two is dedicated to the doctor's sacrifice. The doctor's going to die. Very brave. He's going to he's going to use the TARDIS to uh fucking iron giant this <laughs> missile. And Herbert's along for the ride and he's like, Oh fuck. Well we've got to... <laughs> Well, you know, the sacrifice and so they go through the sacrifice, they look at the screen, oh no. I mean, we're saved, but it's sad that this has happened. And then the doctor walks in. It's like, ha ha. It's like, whoa, how did you do that? Uh, I'll tell you some other time. I'm very clever. <laughs> time time uh, ruse. And you just think. <laughs> just a bit of a time ruse, wasn't it? <laughs> like, are you fucking joking? The doctor would like, never allow H.G. Wells to die and negate Jeff Wayne's musical version of War of the Worlds. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then how did for he, the prompt. But then <laughs> how did he save point. the day? How did he save the day then? Doctor Who stuff. <laughs> the, there's there's two points where people pull them up when they're initially heading towards the time tunnel at the beginning and then when they have to put the the TARDIS in front of a missile mm-hmm. where they're like, 
I mean, the is indestructible, isn't it? And both times he's like, aye, but it'll still be bad. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> but it'll still be sore. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got these seatbelts, anyway, it's fine. Like, I, I can I can tell we're all getting upset, oh, so I'm maybe... <laughs> Actually, I was going to say to Richie before, that, Richie, are you okay? Because you look a bit tired, you look a bit exhausted. Are you still angry about this? Are you in a huff? I'm not, no, no. <laughs> well, I actually well, still, there's still a part of me that's like, I can't accept that this is happening. <laughs> it's very fucking strange. Well, maybe this will help. It's time for <laughs> Owen's game. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Doctor Who Said That. Oh, love it. What I have in front of me is a list of quotes. Each one from an actor who has portrayed the Doctor on the big or small screen. Mm-hmm. Okay. I simply need you to tell me which actor uttered these words. Are so, these, uh, qu- like, are these real life quotes or are they from the show? Well, if you heard my intro, you'll know. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. <laughs> what I have here is a list of quotes. Each one from an actor who is... Oh, sorry, okay, right, okay. Okay. Each deadlier than the last. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, if you know the answer, just say your name and take take a second to think about what actors played... (laughs) Doctor Who. Doctor Who. (laughs) I might pull up a list if that's okay. (laughs) Are we allowed to do that? Uh, You're allowed to have a list, but don't be distracted by your list. I need you listening to me. I don't want you staring at that list. There's a lot. There's a lot of wild cards in there. How many, Richie? How many have there been in total? God, we're falling down a timeline. See this, this Phil. This is where this is where it gets complicated because obviously you've got you've got your main run, right? Mm -hmm. You got Mm -hmm. your first. So the first. I guess now fifty. You got fifteen doctors (laughs) now. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, and then you've got, you know, unofficial ones like John Hurt. Well, not unofficial, but, you know, you've got John Hurt. And then you've got, like, Rowan Someone Atkinson. Was you got so ready to write a message. Rowan that. Atkinson <laughs> and uh, Joanna Lumley and uh, Richard E. Grant. And so I think I, Richie's probably going to do the best here. I, I think he might do it. And I was only going to try. I was hoping that it would be around 13 and I could make a 13 ghost joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I was going for. And I obviously. That was okay, well quote one that. is from the torso. Um, <laughs> okay. Quote one Does anyone know why the BBC decided to make its news presenters prove that they can walk about <laughs> and point at screens instead of just sitting down and telling us the news? This is definitely a tweet, and I think it's Colin Baker. Sorry, who was? This is definitely a tweet. Does, does, does somebody? And I, does somebody r- sorry, have an answer? Richie, Richie, <laughs> Richie. This is definitely a tweet, and I think it's Colin Baker. Boom. Correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, quote nice. two. Colin Baker's got some banging tweets, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> British media. I did not slam the BBC. I merely responded to a question about the absence of classic doctors in the fiftieth special. Richie. Is that, is that also Colin Baker? <laughs> <laughs> Bing! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three. Advice to those even more stupid than me. <laughs> never pull stinging nettles with bare arms. Gloves aren't enough. They fight back. <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> Gavin? I mean, I'm going to stick with Colin Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Bing! <laughs> <laughs> In January, I bought wine from At Naked Wines. I discovered that in doing so, I <laughs> subscribed <laughs> to paying £25 a month for future orders. I received no contact from Naked Wines about this, which apparently is because their title makes a lot of the emails go into spam. Be warned. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Phil? It's a David Tennant. <laughs> Not David ah, Richie. <laughs> Richie. Let's, let's call it Baker. <laughs> <Bing>. <laughs> okay, up next. Have you got the one about him losing his diet pills in the post? <laughs> <laughs> Was that his excuse? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, a horrible thing to say. On everyone. <laughs> I give me the wrong sandwich. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't fit into my coat. I eat the wrong sandwich. <laughs> um, okay, please, everybody, a little, a little respect for the game. Bad decorum. Bizarre behavior. It's like getting rid of David Attenborough as a presenter and employing a younger one with no knowledge of his subject, but who ticks woke etc. boxes. <laughs> Lunacy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who was that? <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> Gavin. Was that Colin Baker? <laughs> okay, up next. <laughs> Anyone considering Sky Protect to ensure their sky watching is <laughs> uninterrupted, think again. The 24 hour repair is what they aim to do. I've been told that it will be 10 days before my sky will be fixed. <laughs> Now, which Doctor Who actor said that? I'm sorry, I knocked over my mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anybody? Uh, anybody want to jump in? Phil. Phil. Yeah. It was David Tennant? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, it wasn't David Tennant. I have to pass ah. it over. Uh, Gavin was a Colin Baker. Bing. <laughs> Good day at rehearsal, great company. Bought socks and M&S, salad and baked potato tonight. <laughs> now, who said that? Who? who? <laughs> Remember, folks, the quicker you buzz in, the quicker we get through these. <laughs> Richie. Richie. It's Colin Baker. Bing. <laughs> Three hours later, and I have finally transferred a film to my iPad. I still, I still think iTunes is counterintuitive rubbish. <laughs> Anybody? Uh. Oh fucking hell! Phil. Phil. Is it David Tennant? I'm sorry, it's not David Tennant. I'm gonna have to pass it over. Uh, Gavin. Gavin. <laughs> is it Colin Baker? <laughs> I'm cooking dinner tonight First time in years Family are anxious But it's time my wife realised I can do more than shout in the evening <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus swept <laughs> Now who, who do I need to uh, Let the police be aware of <laughs> Richie Richie Is it Colin Baker <laughs> <laughs> Hello Gemma Sixth Doctor here There are some beastly people out there With no respect for themselves or anyone Well, Just one more time for like, Because it's a, it's a tricky one Hello Gemma Sixth Doctor here There are some beastly people out there With no respect for themselves or anyone Now who said that? Only Richie would know something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that deep Rich cut. Only Richie knows who the sixth doctor was. Richie. Is it Richie? Is, is it Colin Baker? Bing. <laughs> My wife likes her Valentine's Day present. <laughs> Two tickets for England v. Holland at Wembley. <laughs> and she's taking me. Result. <laughs> Which Doctor Who actor has used that classic ruse to make their wife do something they don't want to on their birthday? Richie. Richie. Was it Colin Baker? Bing! <laughs> Retired upstairs to my study to avoid smell of floor cleaning stuff and sound of vacuum cleaner. <laughs> my wife sure knows how to celebrate Mother's Day. <laughs> Why do you like these people, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> what is he like? Richard, why do you so, like shite? <laughs> so, uh, which Doctor Who actor does Richie love to step up for and support? Yeah. And everything he does and says. <laughs> All his deeds at once. Is it Colin Baker? <laughs> well, you tell us. <laughs> okay. Hate to disagree with you, Lou, but in all my 50 years, I have seen a straight... Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Strap in. Hey, I'm, I'm, I, I want... I, it's because he phrased this... It's a bit of a giveaway there. Um, the way he phrased this was so specific, I want to get it right. Hate to disagree with you, Lou, 
but in all my 50 years, I have seen a straight slash gay divide in acting. Mm. Um. In all his 50 years, he has seen he has a seen straight that. slash gay divide in acting. Uh, well, he must Gavin. be an, an elder man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gavin. So who's it? Gavin? Uh, that was uh, Paul McGann. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm afraid not. Uh, I'll pass it over. Philip? Is it Colin Baker? Bing! <laughs> <laughs> yes! My penultimate one. Never seen. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen is what I meant to write. <coughs> now, who said that? Ooh, never seen is what I meant to write. I quite like that. Never seen is what I meant to write. <laughs> I'm guessing that the ultimate is... Okay. Is it Colin Baker? Richie, is it Colin Baker? <laughs> it's Colin Baker. <laughs> no, uh, never seen is what he meant to write when he was saying, in all my 50 years, I have never seen a straight slash gay <laughs> in, in acting. So uh, he put his foot in it. And then uh, okay. <laughs> realised uh, that he was back in, out his own time lash. <laughs> okay. And uh, finally, show us your tits. <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> Gavin. Is it John Pertwee? It's John Pertwee. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for playing. Doctor, who said that? Oh. Well done. Hooray! Well done. That's probably I, that's cracked I smile. have. I have twice as many as what I read out. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're looking at the death of Twitter and, you know, things like that yeah, make you is, think maybe it's for the best. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> um, okay, well, did you did you like Time Lash? No. <laughs> I'd really like to do one of these with a good episode. <laughs> it's always the Richie, worst when I'm here. Richie, he's no. asking you. He's asking you directly now. Yep, begging on my knees. Show me one that'll actually be like. I get it. It's all. I, I can see it. I can see why. But it's just so boring. <laughs> was always just so boring. It's so funny. Well, your last one was the King's Demons, wasn't it? King's Demons. It was so and funny. There's a trailer the for the one as well. We the next box set that's coming out, and during the trailer, there's a big flash card that says "Making of the King's Demons." Yes. <laughs> in the galaxy. In the galaxy. <laughs> it's Doctor like... Who. Fucking grow up. <laughs> Time lash. Really, like my feeling throughout it was. Like everyone, every episode is someone's first episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Time Lash feels like exactly the kind of thing that would make someone think, oh, I'm not into sci fi. <laughs> <laughs> like, you could watch this if it was like an early thing you saw, and you, you could so easily walk away from it thinking, no, all that stuff is shite. <laughs> like, I, I, I gave it a go. Like, it didn't I paid attention and it didn't make any sense <laughs> and it was really like it looked awful it was really poorly performed now I didn't I did not think Time Lash was anywhere near as much of the disaster that I had heard mm -hmm. but like it definitely is rubbish <laughs> <laughs> it's like the usual, the usual level of rubbish, but a bit lower than that. I was thinking earlier when you said when HG Wells when he gave out the card, I was imagining the people that came in at the beginning of the episode that sat in silence for the whole thing, and then when HG Wells thing at the end happened, they go, "Oh, very good." <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> no, I think. I honestly <laughs> gets you thinking. Yeah. You know? The the best science fiction always does. The best That's where he got the idea for that hang. It's like when, when, um, That's how he wrote that movie with Samantha Mumba. <laughs> on uh, Christmas Day Body years ago. Body. Christmas Day years ago, um I made my parents watch In the Loop. Mm. And uh, at the end of it they sat silently through the entire film so and then this they got is Christmas. I know. And they got to the end of it and they went, um, I remember my stepdad dad going, Aye, oh, very clever. <laughs> wow well, I'll tell you what he wouldn't have said that at the end of time no, he <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe last thing you would say clever. 
<laughs> Saw it coming. Why? Mm. Why do you? Why do you like shite? <laughs> um, <I should. laughs> why do you like shite? <laughs> what thing what you have I married someone? into? <laughs> thank you, say. If I'd known, if I'd known then, I'd be watching shite with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth it. Well, have you? Have you got any particular experiences of that phenomenon? Can you think of no, anything you get, watched? I don't get on well enough with any family member <laughs> to watch anything. <laughs> to watch anything with them. Uh, well, I'll tell you, this, like, this isn't even a, a negative one, but it's it's a funny one. Last Christmas, I was watching the Muppet Christmas Carol because my mum mentioned that someone had uh, brought it up on the radio as a good Christmas film. And she's like, oh, they were talking about that Muppet Christmas Carol. And I said, look, I can stick that on. <laughs> You know, I'm always saying I can put on any film <laughs> and it's like, all right, we'll do that and we'll watch it together. Bragging. And we generally don't watch anything together. Classic father's asleep in no time. Um, <laughs> we get to the bit where it's the it's the sad bit. <laughs> the little frog is fucking dead and gone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like, it's so hard to hold it together during that bit because mm. it is just so sad yeah and i suppose like as part of like to help me not get too mushy i turn to my mum and say oh, are you crying <laughs> 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 and uh her Pussy. reaction <laughs> <laughs> yeah do they bit of shadow boxing <laughs> but uh her reaction really uh, caught me off guard because just like a, a genuinely like, no, like what? <laughs> <laughs> like why would they? They're, they're just they're, they're just like they're puppets and socks and stuff. Like <laughs> so, you know, of course, of course, I'm not crying. It's it's, I don't see past that. Yeah, I don't it's, see. Uh, it's it's just... a puppet show. It's like Punch and Judy. Yeah, it's like why are you are you crying? <laughs> Wait a minute, have you, have you gone insane? <laughs> looking at looking at your eyes are all wet and dewy. Wait a fucking minute. Are you, no, crying wait, cause, are you crying because a fucking pair of trousers has just died? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, it was really good, really good. You know? I think it should be a psychopath test, to be honest. If you cannot get upset at that scene, yeah. you are fucking insane. Yeah. Phil, like, you're it's all detached. made up. It's all made up. Pushing the, pushing the old man awake. Wake up, wake up, wait till you see what this boy is. Let's we'll see what he's crying at. Ah, he's fucking green. No, Fuck. My dad was this is you. to be asleep this so is... that he didn't have to see his son disappoint him by crying at the fucking <laughs> one parent felt point, one, toad. <laughs> one parent point to the other. This is you, by the way. Ah, this is you. All your this. fault. <laughs> Wake up, they're what burying the... a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the Wayne, he's beside himself. <laughs> This is because yeah. just, you're just a mess. <laughs> a <puddle>. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the one that said to him, you don't need to go to football anymore. <laughs> and now look what's happened. Took him out karate class. <laughs> He'll stick at nothing. He'll stick at nothing. <laughs> All the enemies. <laughs> All that. You're, of course, sitting on the stairs, both hands on the rails of the banister. <laughs> crying your eyes. furiously putting stuff in a suitcase. <laughs> I'm not having it. I just wanted to watch The Muppets. I didn't even want to watch it. You wanted to watch it. <laughs> I've seen it. I've shed my tears. <laughs> cried myself dry. I'm all cried out. <laughs> My tear ducts are so calloused. <laughs> like a fucking Klingon over here. <sighs> Two dicks. Um, right, so... <laughs> um, ga- far be it from me, Gavin, to step on your toes in your show. Um, Thank you. Have we got time for an RE game? Just, yeah, I was just, thinking... It's, it's, it's a small bit of fun before we go. Yeah, Richie was looking a bit exhausted. I think that'd probably be a good... <laughs> so, God knows. His face is tripping him because right. of this whole thing. Crack so we fucking him smile, would you? <laughs> <laughs> so, Phil, Phil, I hate to jump in. Mm, please. But it's just like, does part of your game require to be a big finish? Because I do have <laughs> just a few questions to get to. I'm just wondering, do we want to do the questions first or the game first? How big are your questions? It's just a short bit. Do your short bit, because this is a massive finish. 
Okay. Yeah. So suddenly Richie, it's uh, suddenly it's Phil's show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, you're already surprised at just how much work went into this <laughs> surprise podcast for you. Did well, you? there's a. Uh, we also love it for a. Uh, uh, I hate Doctor Who podcast first. I actually put a call out for questions in a way that you wouldn't see. And how, uh, how did we you did not that? we did not get a lot of responses. But we got through. Is it because it was in secret? So. How, how did you do that? <laughs> we don't want to show her. No, do you know what I'll actually do? I'll do like the doctor did in Time Lash and be like, Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll tell you later. It was a wee time I'll tell you later. Show us your tits and I'll yeah, tell you. I, I used the, yeah, uh, you actually posted the tweet slip. tomorrow and then... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me just zoom in here. Okay. Uh, so, questions section. Brand new section to I hear the Doctor Who podcast. Doctor, uh, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some answers. <laughs> uh, Give me some clues. <laughs> oh, actually, I should, I should say that these are... I asked for questions for the team the Iron right. Doctor Who team so it wasn't so about time lash okay um, the IHCW okay. team give me cream 82 asks dear Richie and his I hate Doctor Who companions I have been a fan of the podcast for many years when I first listened I had never watched a full episode of the show but started watching the episodes you talk about for better context and always enjoyed them. It wasn't long before I branched out on my own and now consider myself to be someone who does not hate Doctor Who. That's, thank you. That's really thank nice. Thank you all for making me laugh and helping me to find something new to love. Richie's heartfelt enthusiasm for the show is contagious. Who would have thought a podcast called I Hate Doctor Who could be so positive? My question is, given how old the Doctor is, would it be childish to assume they have never experimented with anal play? <laughs> it's funny, I was getting quite emotional there. And then. I could see it in your face. I took a screen grab. Oh, don't tell me some fucking puppets died. <laughs> the wee worm. <laughs> um, That's safe slimy. to assume. Safe to assume. Yeah, he's got. How many arseholes does he have? I think he's just got one. Just the one. <laughs> Paper. <laughs> but it is uh, at the top just the of one, his bum crack. What? In, what? In hell? It's at the very top of his bum crack. So when he does a poo, it comes out at like a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> his, his little, his little so vortex. that's a <laughs> unanimous yes. Yes. To that, mm. yes. thank you for your question. Um, Next one Anal is... play. <laughs> <laughs> Grace Hundley asks, is it true that the doctor signs their name Doctor Who in the letter they leave for the meddling monk in the time meddler? Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, and a mail here from someone calling themselves the world's biggest Doctor Who fan. Huh. And they say, where, where, a boo, 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 a goo, goo, Sounds about right. Aye. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that sounds about right. That sounds about if right. there yeah. was any chance that the... Um, Miserable comments in the comments <laughs> weren't already leaving an angry comment. I would love to see just the, the, the headphones taken off and thrown down on the table. <laughs> the glasses come off at the same time when they pull them off. Well, and that was the uh, questions round. Thanks so much. <laughs> Or... We don't, we don't, uh, what about trivia? You not had any trivia? You get any trivia you want to give us? No, the, from you looking at the wiki. Oh, I don't really. I don't, I've not been on the wiki, is it? 7.4 <laughs> million viewers. Yeah, that's, is that that's not enough? I can say. I, I'll be honest, none of the trivia. Is it not? Interested <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> it's also very boring. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I listened to the commentary. That has Colin Baker on it for like the first five minutes or so, and I really hope we can drop in the. I already I already saved an MP3 at this moment, <laughs> but there's an excellent bit where 
You should just play it, so because it'll explain itself. Let's hear that now. This story is kind of classically regarded as the nadir of um, the Sixth Doctor's time. Um, actually, I think it holds up a lot better. Um, ha- having watched it again recently, I, I find it it's actually less worse than when one remembered it. <laughs> it's so bad it's good. Yeah, and oh, that, of course, is... Um, Christine? Lovely Christine Cavanaugh. John Nathan Turner was very good. <laughs> but for you guys, what happens is one of the like it's brought up about Time Lash being poorly received and considered really bad. And uh Colin Baker's like, and you know, I, I watched it recently and I thought this is you know, it's I thought it was quite quite good. And someone else on the panel is like, you know, oh yeah, like a so bad it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and he does not mean it like that. <laughs> you can hear he takes it really badly. <laughs> it's very funny to be fair. There's just like just a quiet kind of no not no, no. not so bad it's good. <laughs> just oh, listen, just yeah. good. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get a fucking job out of this. <laughs> I'm only seeing uh the Borad was given leeway to rewrite his own lines. All right, it's a lot uh, of trust. And no appa- wonder it didn't make sense in the end. The, this was going to be, this could have been the first season of Doctor Who which ventured, uh, which, how have they written this? Uh, which was a huge departure from the original Doctor Who theme. So there was going to be a completely new theme for this season, like getting away from the entire, you know, do, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end, it was going to end with the Doctor shouting standing on the edge of tomorrow today 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 today. it's all up to me how far i go um that's weird (laughs) no i read that as well i remember those are the lyrics Um, so phil we should let phil do a game i'm sorry yes please um right so we're gonna play a game called Doctor, how many times do they say that? <laughs> it's a simple game of how higher or lower. Okay. Richie, Richie, we're so close to the end. Please, for yeah, just, please, please, man, please. For just two. I promise minutes, you, we're going to have a lot of fun, and then you just can go and complain to whoever. <laughs> you can text these guys and be like, "Don't ever fucking do that to me again." That wasn't Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you the first word, right? Mm-hmm. I going to tell you that that word appears in the script for this, the transcript that I read, available on Mm. Um, The word time appears in this episode 114 times. (laughs) Okay? Okay. The next word is spirit. Hold on. 114? 114 times. It's it's like 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Fuck it, hell. Okay. It is a fucking Doctor Who episode. (laughs) 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 They do say not, time a lot. If you consider do it, do not a, make this a drinking game. Do not. Number of times mentioned per hour. <laughs> quite high. Um, for spirit, I would have to say lower. Spirit. Lower. 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 lower, yeah. lower. Richie, lower. Beautiful. Lower. All correct. Spirit appears five times in the script. Right. The next word is more locks. Higher or lower? You get to the end. Higher. You went out. You went a golden calf. <laughs> uh, higher. <laughs> Higher, I'm gonna say. Everyone's going higher. Okay, you, you may want to start mixing stuff up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've only got one Not calf. on us. Unified on us. <laughs> and another golden object that I haven't received yet. Uh, <laughs> we'll pull the, the next cup. word is. Brandrills. Wait, was. Brandrills. Lower. Okay. Lower than 19? Mm hmm. I'm gonna say higher. Gav's going to go higher. I'm going to go lower. Richie's going to go lower. Gavin, you're out. Oh. Bandrose was only mentioned seven times. <laughs> Fuck! Gavin and Richie progress to the next round. Fuck off, Gavin. Well, I didn't know it was a knockout thing, otherwise I would have taken this more serious. <laughs> <Is that? laughs> <laughs> I, I would have said what was definitely the right answer. <laughs> I know that if they had their way, the Doctor would have said the word today at least three times. <laughs> yeah. Just in his new theme. Yeah. To date, to date, to date. <laughs> so Brandles appears seven times. 
Malin. Higher or lower? Higher. Higher. Two hires. It's higher. It's 40. <laughs> Next. Oh, that was like you and your left school. <laughs> <laughs> Missile. It's a wee Scottish joke. <laughs> yep. <laughs> For those who are records of achievement. Missile. A uh, Scottish lore. joke. Come on, you're laying it on a bit thick there. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, you said the word missile lower. is mentioned uh, lower. Lower. And lower. You're both correct. <laughs> this is where it gets difficult. So missile appeared 13 times in the script. Space. <laughs> I'll um, say higher. I'm going to say lower. Oh, Richie is out. Oh, he's betrayed his Doctor Who knowledge. Owen, oh, can you cross the line? There's one word left. Do you want okay. double or nothing <laughs> on this? The word uh, space appears 18 times in the script. I do not want to double or nothing. I'll take what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> you, went, you went back your golden cow. <laughs> now go on, Phil. Please, please give me the give me the, the last word is Tarbus. Does that appear more or less times than 18 times in the script? I'm going to say less. He's fucked it. <laughs> ah, you fucked it. <laughs> We're all oh, I'm so We're glad all I didn't choose to do that. <laughs> you all heard me. I'm I didn't so choose to do that. I'm so glad it was just a curiosity for the audience I, to I hear. still get the thing. I still get £1,000 out of Bill's cash, bank account. Cash, it's cash. just arrived. It's just arrived. Congratulations, mate. Thank Spend you, it Mr. Wisely. Beast. Thank you. The next story in the Doctor Who, what you'd call it, saga, was uh, Revelation of the Daleks, which is one of Richie's favourite stories. Fucking Belter. It's so belter. join us next time. It's a fucking belter. Can't wait. Belter. Join us next week. Can't wait. You join us tomorrow night. Tomorrow. <laughs> 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 wait, and watch that three times. So that's that's been Time Lash, um, and that's been I Hate Doctor Who. If we have no further business, I suggest we all move into the TARDIS and set course for everlasting fun. Uh, <laughs> I want to just say thank you very much to Owen O'Donnell for... Uh, being my co-host tonight thank you gavin lovely to be here philip madison thank you my podcasting life partner always a pleasure i love you love and, you um and our first time guest on the show richie morgan <laughs> who has i'm really i hope you had a good time and i hope you uh you still want to come to my birthday <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, very welcome so <laughs> from all of us here at I Wait, hate Doctor can I ask, Who. Sorry, can I ask how long has this been in the the works? It's none of your business. As <laughs> as soon as the last one went out, <laughs> <laughs> it was after you had. I think, it, it, in fact, it was because you'd we'd set up to watch Time Lash. Oh yeah, and then I was like, Oh, were you this like? Would, this that's why you perfect. kept messaging me about like, let's watch Time Lash. No, it was after we'd set that up. Like yeah. it wasn't. Okay, I didn't. Okay. I didn't get you over to watch Time Lash for this. Right. Okay. Okay. You know. <laughs> or did I? <laughs> um, so, so from all of us here, at I hate Doctor Who. We'll see you, hater. Bye. 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 See you in twelve months. <laughs> <laughs>